other ways pro-abortion advocates try to gain favor is appealing to the idea of so-called wanted versus unwanted children. One of their slogans is, every child a wanted child. The idea is that as long as women have the legal ability to abort their children, every child will be quote-unquote wanted since all the quote-unquote unwanted children will be gotten rid of before they're born. But shouldn't every child be wanted? The idea that we can arbitrarily want or not want children in a way totally unhinged from choosing to engage in sex stems from the contraceptive mentality, a mindset that pervades our culture. The cover of the November 1923 Birth Control Review published by Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger depicted a woman held down by a ball and chain labeled unwanted babies. Ever since, advocates of contraception and abortion have been appealing to the same idea. They made special use of it in the push for legal abortion in the U.S. before and immediately after 1973's Roe v. Wade. The National Abortion and Reproductive Rights Action League asserted in 1974 that legal abortion would decrease the number of quote-unquote unwanted children, along with battered children, child abuse cases, and possibly subsequent delinquency, drug addiction, and a host of social ills believed to be associated with neglectful parenthood. Anyone who has observed the rise in drug use and abuse, child abuse cases, and broken families and homes over the past five decades can see this was a total fiction. Child abuse rates in particular have shown a direct correlation to abortion rates in the U.S. But more important, how could it be that the value of any child, whether born yet or not, could depend on the feelings of others? Can anyone decide that anyone doesn't have value? Sure, a woman or people pressuring her might in fact not want a child, but can that determine the child's inherent dignity? The answer, of course, is absolutely not. Every human person has inherent dignity and value. It's written in our DNA. Just because it might be hard or inconvenient, even deeply challenging to raise a child whom we don't want, it doesn't mean that child can be discarded like trash. Some might disagree with this point, or they will make further arguments to justify abortion based on wantedness versus unwantedness, but the consequences of this ideology are the best argument for the pro-life side against it. Take for example the fact that more than 90% of children diagnosed with Down syndrome are aborted in North America. That's even more disturbing if you consider the New York Times' 2022 report that prenatal tests for diseases like Downs give 85-90% to 90 false positives. Or take the case of India or China where sex-selective abortion, usually favoring males, has been promoted for decades. Advances in genetic testing and DNA sequencing will lead to further gene-based abortions. The result of thinking people can abort pre-born children based on their whims, whether justifying it as a mercy killing or not, inevitably extends to children after birth. Doctors Francis Crick and James Watson, who discovered the double helix structure of DNA, have both expressed that newborns should be forced to pass genetic tests or otherwise prove their worth, as it were, before they are allowed to live. This is a shocking return to the barbaric practices of ancient societies that starved or abandoned unwanted newborns. More recently, former Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, a pediatrician, implied he would support letting babies who survived botched abortions die and making it the law of the land. So-called ethicist Joseph Fletcher also has written that infanticide might be better called postnatal abortion, recommending it for, quote, excess population and, quote, defective children. Of course, we all know that abortion is just a euphemism for prenatal infanticide. All of this talk about wanted versus unwanted children leads directly to a warped and murderous view of human life. It's dehumanizing to the core. The evil ideologies of the slave trade and of murderous eugenic regimes like the National Socialists of Germany contain similar viewpoints about people. In truth, the slogan, every child a wanted child, should mean that every child conceived ought to be cherished and loved as a unique and intrinsically dignified human person. The fundamental issue is what we alluded to early in this video. The decision to engage in sexuality is an agreement between a man and a woman to the possibility of new life. 
It is the natural and inherent course of sexual behavior that new human offspring come about. It may not happen every time, but it is the biological reality and new life should be welcomed as a miracle of joy. By the way, this is also why it is so important to reserve sexuality for a committed and loving marriage relationship only. The couple must be open to life and be able to provide for that new life if it comes. This Catholic teaching is based wholly in the nature of human sexuality and the objective reality of human love. That is what Human Life International stands for, receiving with love all children who are conceived as the fruit of love. That's what we should all want. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to tap the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay connected to the conversation. Thanks for watching.